Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another installment of Scott's Tennis Selections here for Friday, May 24th. Before we get into the play of the day, we'll quickly recap what happened yesterday. We ended up picking up a loss with the Dustin Brown on the money line as he ended up losing to Salvador Caruso in three sets. I thought that it would be a very close match, as I said that Caruso would potentially give Brown run for his money, but I did not expect Caruso to serve as well as he did. And as I pull up these stats right here, Caruso served absolutely out of his mind as he ended up in the third set alone. Caruso won all 17 of his first serve points. Very difficult to win when your opposition never loses a point on their first serve. But Brown won the first set 6-3, and I mean 6-4. Ended up losing the next two sets. Tough loss there, but we will bounce back in terms of some of the leans. Uh, we So far, we're profitable on those with the leans. As we recommended, the Benoit pair and Shapovalov over two and a half sets. That ended up going to three sets as pair ended up winning. We did recommend, though, Joe Wilfred Sanga, who did lose, and, and Zverev under, which ended up going to three sets. But we also recommended Del Bonus on the over, uh, Del Bonus winning against Ramos Vinolas. So overall, decent day, but you ended up getting a nice plus price with the Benoit pair over two and a half sets. So hopefully you were able to make a little bit of coin yesterday, but we'll be looking to bounce back here with the play of the day on Friday, May 24th. And we will be going back to the French Open qualifying. And we are actually going to be looking at a match on the total or on the sets, as I should say, which should be taking place at roughly 4 a.m. And it is between Loxanen and Yemmer. And that match will be taking place at 4 a.m. These two players have faced each other on clay before. Two years ago in Sweden, they played each other, and Loxanen ended up winning 7 6, 7 5 in straight sets. But we think that the value is on the over two and a half sets here, which is available at plus 150 on Bovada for some very nice solid value there. Before I actually get into that, just a quick reminder while I start talking about the play of the day. If you have any questions or any matches you want me to cover in particular, don't be afraid to ask in the comment section. And I will gladly address those uh, as soon as I finish with the play of the day. I know yesterday Peter wanted to know about the dull bonus match, and I ended up providing you with a winner if you were able to see that in time and you ended up listening. Peter, if you are watching the video, I hope that you ended up taking my advice and I hope you were able to cash in as a winner there with Del Bonus. But for me, in terms of the play of the day for tennis, I like the over two and a half sets here. Uh, Loxanen ended up going to three sets against Arguello in the second round of qualifying as he ended up winning, where Yemmer ended up going to three sets against Tatlot as he actually probably shouldn't even be in the situation, as he had to fight off numerous match points in the second set. And as I look at SofaScore, he ended up having to fight off six match points in the second set, which he did before winning that set in a tiebreaker and then winning the third set convincingly 6-1. But these, for me, I'm leaning to over two and a half sets because both these players are very similar. They're both not great servers by any means. They both love to rally behind the baseline. Loxanen is a slightly better player, but Yemmer definitely is a pusher. And when I say pusher, he keeps the ball in play, he hustles, he forces you to hit the extra shot, kind of like a diminuar. Or, I mean, Nadal's the ultimate example of a pusher because he hits every ball over the net. But similar styles, and I think Yemmer will be able to win a set in this one. First two rounds of qualifying for him did go three sets. Loxanen has won seven straight on clay, but three of his last four matches have gone two, three sets. So I think that there is a lot of value on plus 150 at Bovada. And I think that, considering the fact that Yemmer is only a plus 110 underdog, on Bovada, it makes me believe that both of these players are viewed as relatively equal. So for that reason, I would not be surprised to see this match go to three sets as both players should struggle with their serve during different portions of the match. So we think there is value there at plus 150 on the over two and a half sets at Bovada, and that will be the tennis selection of the day. So with that being said, we will go into some other leans. My favorite match in terms of who I like is Bolelli against Soeta, but a minus 550 or so that there's no value there as Bolelli is a tremendous player. And I expect Bolelli, regardless of who he plays in the first round, besides of the fact that it's going to be Nadal or something like that, I think Bolelli will win a first round match in the French Open. And I'll probably look to him as an underdog, um, you know, price there in the first round. But a fun fact, which some of you might want to know, I will actually be in Las Vegas for the start of the French Open, so I will try to put in some tennis parlays and some picks 
through William Hill and some of the local sports books there. So if I end up doing that, I will be letting all of you know on my Twitter of any potential tennis plays that I will be having. So you can back me or fade me up to your discretion. But I like to be transparent with my plays. And if you follow my Twitter, you also know that we ended up losing a personal parlay for fun. Uh, we had Bucks first quarter with some two PFL fighters, roughly plus 300 each. And that parlay would have paid out at roughly plus 3,300. But that didn't work out. But either or, I will post. I post everything that I bet, and I let people know on this show what I bet. And if you did lose with Dustin Brown yesterday, I did too. So you're not alone on that one. But we look to bounce back there. But moving on to some of the leans here for tennis, I do like Taylor Fritz here with the plus on the spread, and I definitely like the over here. Fritz is one of the rare Americans who's actually been really solid on clay over the last couple of months. They've played each other twice. Fritz won the first matchup in straight sets. Pair won the second matchup in three sets there. Pairs looked really good in his home country of France in the Lyon tournament, but he got taken to three sets against McDonald, got taken to three sets against Shapovalov. Shapovalov's a, gr- a very solid player in general, but Fritz is no slouch in his own right, as he had a very impressive win over Batista Agut yesterday. And as I've said before about Benoit Pair, he's very tough to back because of the fact that he is very mentally unstable and how Pairs serve. Uh, occasionally, you know, short circuits, and we think that that'll be a concern. Pair, for example, yesterday had six aces, very solid, but he did have seven double faults, and you cannot be you cannot afford to give away seven free points on double faults. And I think Fritz is a pretty solid server and a pretty solid, uh, you know, just rallier behind the baseline. Should be able to give Pair some problems. So I would lean to the Fritz plus in the spread, and I would also lean to the over. Uh, two and a half sets in that match, as I expect that one to be a battle throughout. Uh, yeah, Peter, glad I could help ca- uh, get you some cash there for uh, for yesterday. But in terms of Del Bonis versus Verev, I'm going to stay away from that one, honestly. Del Bonis is a very solid player, but the main reason why I like Del Bonis in that matchup is because he was playing well and that Ramos Vanolas doesn't bring a unique style to the table. Del Bonis and Vanolas are both mostly clay court specialists who rally behind the baseline, don't possess that much power, and they try to rally behind. Whereas Zverev, I expect him to give some serious problems. Plus, Zverev is a significantly better server than Ramos Vanolas, so he should be able to hold serve easily while Dobonis is not. So for me, I'm not going to touch that match. But if you do like Dobonis on the spread, you probably will get some nice value at a plus. But I definitely would stay away from that match because I just think Zverev has too much offensive firepower. He did struggle in his last match against Hugo Delian, though. So you never know. But if you're looking towards Del Bonus, I would not look towards the money line. I would look towards the plus in the spread, as Del Bonus could potentially bring one set to a tie break or maybe a 7-5. But, yeah, sorry, Paul. I can't really help you there. I don't know. what book, uh, Paul, if you could just tell me what book you currently use for tennis. Uh, sorry, but there are some other um, – some books carry the French Open qualifying. Some don't. So that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, Peter, I'm glad you agree on Fritz there. I think that Pear is definitely – I think he'll win the match, but I think it'll be very tough. And Fritz has been very, very stingy on clay so far, and he was able to beat Batista Gut, who's a very solid clay court player as well. So I think he will give it a good run for his money. Yeah, Paul, just let me know what book you currently use for tennis betting, and I'll try to let you know. Paul, I've been trying to do the best for the people who do not have French Open qualifying to cover some of the mainstream matches – like I did for Peter yesterday with Del Bonus. How, for me, if you're not able to do that, I will still give my leans on the rest of the card to try to help prevent that or try to limit the damage on that. But there's not really much I can do in that situation. Uh, in terms of other French Open qualifying matches, not really much value on the board. I do like Sandgren beating Bork. That's just a small lean. Sandgren's roughly a minus 150 favorite or more. But Bork has had two very tough three-set matches where Sandgren has been able to coast to straight-set victories and he has dropped a total of 10 games in those two matches. I think Sangren will make it back. He's a pretty solid clay court player when his head is right, and it seems like he's finally been able to get himself back under control. So I think Sangren should be able to win that match against Bork, but I would expect that to be pretty tough. But the play of the day, as I said before, will be on Yemmer and Loxanen over two and a half sets at Bovada at plus 150 for the value. I just think that that'll be a very close match. But... With that being said, before we conclude today's video, brief reminder of our sponsors here at PointsBet and all the deals they're offering. They have up to two risk-free bets of up to $1,000. So if you lose, if you had money on the Bucks money line tonight or Bucks spread, 
it's not the end of the world. You can get money back, or even if you had money on Dustin Brown, as I recommended last night, then it's no big deal because you get your money back and no questions asked. You get up to two of those, plus the NBA playoffs. If you ended up betting on a team and they are up after three quarters and end up losing the game outright, you still win, and that is a great deal they are offering. And if you would have taken the Bucks money line yesterday, you would, instead of being a loser and watching your team choke away a – uh, about a three-point lead in going into the fourth quarter, you would have simply cashed your money. So something to keep in mind there. And there's also a Stanley Cup deal where it's it's the NBA playoffs, but it's a Stanley Cup deal now because it's the only series on where if the, if the team you bet on is up by two goals at any point, you win and don't have to worry about sweating it out and worrying about your team choking in the third period. But with that being said, that's going to do it for this installment of Scott's Tennis Selections. Look for tomorrow morning for me to upload another uh, video with another play of the day, hopefully, if I look at the card and find value. But with that being said, that's going to do it for this installment of Scott's Tennis Selections here for Friday, May 24th. And good luck to all of you and your respective tennis plays.